So what are the must have accessories to make your DSLR videos awesome? I'm gonna share with you my top 10 coming up. Hey, what's up guys, Sean here with Think Media TV, helping you go further, faster in media. And on this channel, we do tech reviews, audio reviews, video gear reviews. And so if you want more videos like that, definitely subscribe. And hey, at any time during this video, definitely check out show notes and links to everything mentioned in this video in the YouTube description. Let's get into the video. Accessory number one, a shotgun microphone. As you know, one of the most important parts of video is audio. And so a good shotgun mic is one of the most versatile and essential tools for DSLR shooting, YouTube videos, and filmmaking. And I love the video mic because it's really well built. Uh, Rhodes a solid company, but you could uh, save some money, you could shop around. There are definitely cheaper shotgun mics, or also another popular mic is the pro version of this uh, that has a few extra features and uh, is a little slimmer in its design. And so you gotta make sure that your camera has an external uh, mic input, and then you can use this, and I'll use this. There's a shotgun mic uh, shooting this video right now uh, at live events uh, for interviews on kind of a run and gun style. This is great. Or you could also, I got this one with the uh, Studio Boom Kit, so you could actually take it off camera with an extension cable in case you're using a much longer lens and uh, you're too far away from the mic. Number two, an external audio recorder. This one right here is called the Zoom H1, and I like it because it's it's small, it's very portable, it's super light. And what's great about external audio recorders is that when you're doing audio on a DSLR, you can't really monitor it, there is ways to do it, uh, but it's challenging. And so what's nice about recording the audio separately is that the quality's higher, but you also have a headphone jack and an input for your mic. It makes it a great way to get higher quality audio and, as, and also be able to monitor it in case uh, something goes wrong with the audio and you need to reshoot a scene or something like that. I also really like the Zoom H1 because it looks like a microphone, like, like that you could hold in your hand. And I'll use this with other cameras or even with an iPhone to do an interview. But when it comes to external audio recorders, you do have to sync the audio up in post. And so you have one audio file on the recorder, one on the SD card in your camera, and then in your editing software, you uh, put it together. But if you want to get super high qu quality audio, doing external is a lot better. And then the other one that I like to use is the Zoom H4n. It's a really well-known uh, audio recorder. Both of these have mics on them, and so you could actually use them like a shotgun mic. It, it could double as a shotgun mic. You could put it on top of your camera uh, with a mount and uh, record the audio separate um, with the mics here. But what I like about this one is it has two XLR inputs. And so on all of the interview shoots that I do with lapel mics and things, I'll use this uh, Zoom H4n. And so that is another one to check out. Number three is a good pair of headphones. And uh, pretty much any headphones would do. Um, these are some Bose Sound Trues. I uh, love these. But the distinction that you wanna make sure you look for is that they are over ear and uh, that's so that they cut out as much noise, external noise as possible, so that you can really get a good monitoring of the audio that you're recording on an external audio recorder. Number four is a good video light. Wow. This is a Neewer CN160, and I like this light, super budget, it's like 24 bucks, and I actually did a dedicated video on these lights that I've used for uh, lighting on whole shoots, and you can check that up. I'll uh, put it on the YouTube card and in the description. But uh, what I love about this light is, specifically for like DSLR filmmaking or run and gun, is that you can just mount them right on camera and have some good light uh, supplemental for shooting. And I'll use this a lot, especially at live events. I found that this is critical if you're doing DSLR at like weddings, you know, a lot of times you'd end up, you're trying to do interviews and it's super dark or it gets dark shooting at night and you just kind of need that on camera light. Uh, it comes with a couple of filters so you can go kind of give it an amber tone and match it with like indoor lighting and different things like that. And so a solid video light and a super good budget option that I feel like is comparable to all of the more expensive options. Number five is a good mounting bracket like this dual mount bracket here. Ha ha, if you wanna use your light and your shotgun mic at the same time, you get a dual mounting bracket like this. And now it makes it possible to run and gun and have your audio going and your lighting going at the same time. This bracket is from Fancier Studio and I like it because it's versatile. So 
I'll put a, a lapel mic up here or the receiver for one and then the light and you can put whatever you want, any combination of things. And so a great piece of kit to have in your bag. Let's zoom out here. Next is a good monopod. And actually I should probably mention, I didn't put it in the list, but a good tripod is pretty essential as well. And uh, I'll put the one I'm using in the description. Uh, but uh, what I like about monopods is this is my ideal run and gun live event setup. Um, this particular Manfrotto monopod is the um, 561 BHDV. And what's great about it is um, you can get up and running uh, pretty quickly with your setup and, but what's essential is this little combination we've made here is so heavy now that you can shoot all day without really getting tired and have some stabilization. It also has a tripod head that is built specifically for video. And so you can get cool uh, pan shots, um, and it's just a super versatile, great, like my camera's on this at weddings back in the day or live events and conferences, literally probably 90% of the time. And it allows me to achieve a lot of cool things. Now, another piece of kit that I absolutely love is these Manfrotto uh, quick release plates. And so you can see how uh, quick you can get the camera on and off with these, hence, Quick release makes sense. But this is the quick release 394. And so what I did was I got, I don't know, probably six of these. And I've got uh, this plate on a slider. I've got it on the tripods, two different tripods. I've got it on a monopod. And uh, what's great is you can take your camera and just pop from monopod to tripod and move things all around. And so I found that this quick release system just really speeds up shooting, especially for live events and puts makes all the cameras and all the mounting pieces interchangeable really quickly. And I only have like two DSLR bodies, so I'll give these extra plates to uh, shooters that come with me, anybody on the team or whatever, and then they can just jump right in to my ecosystem of uh, tripods with the quick release plates. Okay. Number seven is a gray reflector card. This little guy can be folded down and just kept in your bag, and it's got a white side and a gray side for setting custom white balance. And what I found, of course, that auto white balance isn't always, um, you know, is it can be variable, could be all over the place. Uh, trying to pick the Kelvin can be challenging. If you wanna just make sure that your white balance is perfect, and most of us want to if we're making films or even shooting YouTube videos, especially those like in the beauty that skin tones and colors really matter. This is really essential because you can just be sure that your white balance is gonna be accurate and the skin tones and colors are gonna be true to life. And what I found is the gray actually works uh, better than the white. I, t I don't actually know why when setting white balance you can use gray. Maybe someone in the comments could explain that. But I just know that the white, I mean, if you even think about this, as I, as I tilt it in the light here, there's just different shades. And it's not as, I don't know, I've just found that this side is really great. But maybe you know more about the specifics of that. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. But uh, a gray card, super cheap, and a good investment for making sure that your uh, colors and your video looks the best as possible. Number eight is my microphone kit. And first is uh, a set of two lapel mics. These are Sennheiser uh, EW100s. And these are great because I'll show you, I just got one of them here. You can plug these into your Zoom H4n external audio recorder. And at times, if you're only using one, you could go direct into camera. And then this wireless receiver captures the audio, captures it to the Zoom H4n, and you can hook it up on you know, their shirt, their clothes, wherever you wanna put it and get some great audio. Now these are what I use a lot of times for interviews. If I've got two people on camera, you use the two different lapel mics. And for like man on the street interviews and for live events, I have a Sennheiser SKP 100 and a omnidirectional dynamic mic uh, RE50B. So these are two pieces. Uh, I always like to hold it here and kind of has a cool vibe to sort of hide the receiver and a good mic for um, shooting interviews and like at event uh, type of content. Now this is one of my favorite sounding mics because it's so good at cutting through uh, all kinds of noise. Like it really just picks up what's right by it and really cuts out everything else, even if there's like loud music playing or people around. And so it's great for live events. 
and then this works with the same receiver. So you just put it on the same channel and this is all one big kit. Now it's super expensive. It is definitely a huge investment to get. I got the two receivers, two transmitters, and then uh, the mic and the transmitter um, and a case, a Pelican case, it comes with it all. But here's the thing, I actually bought that set I think six years ago. The model, it's really the same stuff, but the model, these are G2s, I think G3s are out, maybe there's a newer model, but they're still super rock solid, super dependable. And so the investment's really been worth it, especially as you see that over time, because the stuff is so well built by Sennheiser and has lasted through tons of events, tons of interviews, tons of shoots. And so some of my favorite accessories for sure. Number nine is a digital filter kit. This filter kit is by Hoya. It's not the highest end one, but it's also not the lowest end uh, kit. And it comes with a UV filter, a polarizer, and a warming filter. These filters screw onto your lenses so that, especially when you're outdoors, you can always be sure um, that you get the best video possible. And the other filter that I got, in addition uh, to the, the three that come in the kit, is a Fader ND. Now this particular one, I don't think they make anymore, um, but there is actually a good one that's a lot cheaper that I'll link up in the YouTube description. But what this is and what an ND filter is, is kind of like sunglasses for your camera. And here's why this is awesome, is you, if you're shooting in the dark with like a lens that is 1.8 or uh, 1.2 on the aperture, and you've got that really cool depth of field because of it, you could put it at 1.8 because it's there's not very much light, and even with uh, low ISO and things look great. But you know if you go outside and it becomes really bright out, now you need to stop your camera down uh, F10, F20, and your depth of field is gone. So the nice thing about sunglasses for your lens is that you can now keep your aperture open or pick an aperture that you want and then still get good video. Uh, or photos. And the cool thing about the fader is it, it's just different uh, levels of how dark it is. And so there's a lot of customization as you spin it, it gets darker or lighter on the lens. And the one other thing that I got with this filter kit is I got step up and step down filters. And so these were all, uh, I believe, 72 uh, millimeters. And so they went on a few of my lenses, but rather than buy filter kits for like um, every single you know, lens size I had. Like even on this lens on here, this doesn't fit on here. So it needs a transition ring like this that goes from 77 millimeter down to 72. Boom. And now the Fader ND is on my Tokina 11 to 16. And these transition rings are super cheap. And so you could also go uh, from 72 down to a much lower filter size, like this one that goes from 72 to 52. So if you get a filter kit with a thread size as big as your biggest lens, then what you can do is just step down to all of your other lenses, making it possible to use those same filters on all of your lenses and not have to buy multiple different size filter kits. Or you could do that too, I guess, if you want it. And the 10th accessory for DSLR video is a uh, Gorillapod by Joby. This is the SLR Zoom. And as just an accessory, it's like critical that I have this on my kit. In fact, I just traveled recently I couldn't bring a tripod, but I knew that if I had this, I could you know, wrap it on a big chair or something and uh, make my own tripod. I also like this for shooting time lapses and just having it for um, on the go. Uh, just a great versatile tool and um, something that I find that I'm using all the time in contexts and places that I never uh, knew I would. Question of the day, what is your favorite DSLR accessory or one of the essential accessories that you use when you're making your videos? I'd love to connect with you and hear from you as well as the community connect in the YouTube comments below. So hey, thanks so much for checking out this video. Definitely subscribe for more videos just like this. And if you haven't downloaded the Think Media TV video buyer's guide yet, I uh, just uh, finished that for uh, this year and that is out. You can uh, download that in the YouTube description. There's a link to it. I'll also put it on the YouTube card as well. And it just goes through all the different tools and uh, gear that I use for all kinds of different uh, video, whether vlogging or uh, DSLR filmmaking, or even just using a webcam and having a really budget setup. A lot of cool resources in there. So check that out. And hey, if you appreciate this video, love it if you hit the like button. Uh, let me know feedback in the comment section. And until next time, Think Media TV is helping you go further, faster in media. Keep crushing it, keep smashing it, and we will 
toxin. And the number 10. And the number 10. And the and the 10th. Mm -hmm. oh. Let's get into the video. What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom. 